Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last seats of Europe. I'm your host, Italian Muckle Lover. In which, right now, we are having a little bit of a border skirmish. Not a birder, but a border skirmish between us and, well, the Turkish uh, little no leader there. Okay. Well, that's last time we saw, Turkey decided to go to war with the Levant. We still can't send divisions. Hey, but oh well, it is what it is, right? Cool. Regardless, we are probably barely making any political power. And, oh, the Mongolian Civil War. All right, then. And we're on turn three. We're at nine. Oh, and that we are risking it right now. Let's see. Can we get up to ten? Can we get an equal ten? Come on. Come on. We can do it. Oh, we did it. Okay, I was not surprised. <laughs> I'm actually very surprised it actually worked. Wow, that was risky. We had a 33% chance. We're starting off this episode a little, uh, a little risky. I'm not going to lie. I was worried that we won't be able to get this, but that's not, that's nice. That's real nice. Hope you guys are having a good day. We just finished the tertiary sector and Italian victory in Rhodes. Wait, hold on. Do we get more? Whoa, hold on. Unsurprisingly, our forces have successfully repelled the Turkish advance into Rhodes. Though the short conflict was simply a part of a larger effort by the Turks to conquer long-claimed territories in the chaos following the collapse of the triumvirate. The victory has been widely publicized by the press and celebrated in Rome. The bravery of the Italian army can withstand any attack, Ziano said in a speech from the capital. The Turks cannot defeat us in Rhodes, and they will not defeat us in the Levant. This success hardly ensures victory in the Middle East or the continued glory of the Empire, but Rhodes, at least the Italian banner, still flies. D this, I don't think this happened when I played Italy before. Hold on. Uh, we still have Ascendant Navy, of course. I didn't actually talk about the National Spirits, I think, which is not very good for, for me. Uh, declining trade. Oh, that hurts so much. Hmm. Anything else? Nope. I, I, I'm... Hmm. Well, if that's the case, I don't like local police work because it hurts your compliance game. We need as much compliance game as possible. Really, that's the best thing to do. Uh, what else do we have around here? We have the Special Forces, MVSN, which really isn't bad. So, I want to use them, but I'm going to... Why do we have 12 Army XP? Huh. Well, let's take them off anyways, because... Well, before I do that, though, Cavalry. Do we have any Cavalry? Colonial. Uh, these guys, I wanted, I don't want to use anti-tank for stuff. I really do not want to use anti-tank. We can save artillery first then. Uh, we're not making any divisions right now, as you can tell. So, what do we have down here? Send in the black shirts or something? Fire the current leader. Uh, oh, ah, uh, yes. The war in Levant, finally. Send new guns. Well, I want to do this. So, this way we can send some stuff, some volunteers over there, hopefully. Let's go and do that. All right, finally. How many volunteers can we send? Two, which will be hopefully more than enough. So I'll send one, t and I'll send two tank divisions. Actually, how, oh, eight combat, Jesus Christ, eight combat width. Um, I think it's more important for us to actually send planes than anything else, but at least we can get involved in this area here, which is something I actually really wanted to do. So, uh, what else we have down here? Uh, he's good on attack, who's this? Reckless, war hero, Antonio. All right, send him over. Alright, there we go. And up to... Oh, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good for us. Where are them planarinos? Found them. Well, found some. Uh, well, it's not a lot, but it'll help us out, hopefully. Head on over, and then we'll do another focus. And boomerinos. So I asked you guys yesterday, which plan would you go with either Kineva? Probably not, since I think we went down that route when we did... When we played this earlier... Uh, let's see, the more fascist side. So he, it was up to either Cadorna or Defense Plan, defense plan Campioni. So at the time of recording, um, there's a, there's more support for Defense Plan Cadorna. So, second plan drawn up by the General Staff is Cadorna Plan, named after the great general who led our army through World War One, fighting in the Alps against the dreaded Germans, Luigi Cadorna. This plan is focusing on our border with Germany, ensuring that the region is safe from them being, invading us. To do so, a new training program around surviving the harsh and cold conditions of the Alps has been devised, hopefully reducing the deaths related to this in the case of war. Which would be a good thing. Now we're doing... Oh, finding some enemy planes. Nice. We're not doing any ground attacks or anything like that, but that's okay. So you guys are actually over here just hanging out. I actually left them over here, so... Yeah... Also, I don't think I told you guys about we're on cu patch cutting room floor G. Just to let you guys know. The pillars, I don't mind more construction, but mm, interest rates will decrease. It's not bad. 
Oh, that's not, that's meant the declining trade. When the accursed dam at Gibraltar was built, we did not entirely realize the drastic effect it would have on our imports and exports. Trade through the Mediterranean was, of course, essentially destroyed, and the lowered water levels resulted in widespread drought. But this was not the end. The land formed in the aftermath is an unusable salt flat, hardly useful territory. But this matters not, for we will not give in so easily. Trade must resume, and there is no other option. We will immediately begin efforts to find new routes and manners in which we may trade with the rest of the world, putting an end to our slowly dying trade routes. Which is a good thing. Alright, so we're going to get involved, which is fine with, and good with us. Uh, what do we want? Eh, I don't even see this stuff. I don't even see this. So, oh, they actually went up to 14. I didn't even have to do anything. And they still, we, we're still going to win. we got two weeks left there. That's totally fine. Do they have helicopters? How does the Levant have one, two helicopter divisions? And we don't need three different helicopter divisions. Why are you using them as gear? Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Why are they using them as garrison divisions? Why? Ah, there we go. Finally, we get we can get involved a little bit, but uh, they can afford helicopter divisions, and yet we cannot. Uh, breaks my heart. Mexican fishermen, let's do Giuseppe. All right, so we're going to attack actually. Oh, let's help them out here first. I don't. Mu oh, well, they won there. Well, maybe we'll attack Sam then. Large scale fronts. Hey, just in time. So we got this. We got this. Let's grab some of this. More south attack. Don't mind if we do. If that's the case, get up to here, actually. There you go. Help him out. There you go. Get in the action. Very good. Oh, we can actually see how many divisions they have. That's kind of nice. Can they pierce us? No, not for right now. Oh. Very good. Many of the declining trade. Uh, that's not bad. GDP growth rate will increase. Why not? Incentivize tourism in the fourth shore. Many think of Libya as nothing more than a desert wasteland. The truth is, however, there is an incredible amount of rich Greek and Roman history there. Archaeological sites such as Leptis Magna, one of the most preserved Roman cities in the Mediterranean, are untapped wells of tourism. Even the Sahara Desert has great beauty if one knows where to look. We must show the world the beauty of Libya so that our tourists can pour into it and spend lots of money there. With Greek and Roman sites abound, combined with the great beauty of Tripoli and Sahara, why wouldn't tourists want to come to Libya? The fourth shore will surely become one of the premier tourist spots on the planet. I love it that they're attacking. S&P holds on to Scotland. The light in the north stays alight. Very good for them. Very, very good. And I love that we're going to get more supplies and such. Okay, so one and... Wow, we're eight. So we need to do two. Or we just don't do anything first. Maybe we'll do nothing first. Let's try that strategy. Because as we saw previously twice... Um... Nothing really happened, so, like, we'll just have to wait. Like, they went over 10, which is fine. And I do have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and energized, because, man, I'm going to need some energy today. I'm enjoying this. Ah, General Antonio Scaramuzza de Marco. Ah, uh, de Marco. We're about the Alpine forts. Air bases, and that's kind of boring. Let's grab tourism and the governance. The Italian governance have some of the richest history on the planet, with the city of Jerusalem in our hands, even though it's on fire, and the incredible beauty of Ethiopia, even though it might, a little be, might be a little bit on fire. It is clear that we have an amazing opportunity in front of us. Why not invite those who wish to see the glorious city of Jerusalem with their own eyes? Why not let people explore the beauty of the Ethiopia mountains with their families? Of course, such actions will not be free. These tourists will need food, shelter, and tours, and we'll make certain that all the amenities such that a tourist could ever want will be present. Such an investment will be expensive, but it's going to pay off, especially with such lucrative destinations. I still want to attack, but hey, you know what? If they want to ruin their manpower and such, totally okay with me. I wonder how long this is going to last. They have plenty of manpower, of course. Let's see, 21 to 32. And stockpile-wise, how are they looking at? Not good. Of course, we've only sent volunteers, so it's not that much we can really do. Um, if we, even if we left this area here, we actually might be able to push into here. Then again, if we attack, we're going to lose a lot of you know, strength. There could be a lot of attrition. Not a lot of good stuff. And one of the comments from yesterday, from or at least from the last video, was for us to go a certain route when we choose which democratic leader we want. So we'll see what happens. But let's go ahead and defend the Adriatic Wasteland. The former Adriatic Sea is now a vast and useless salt flat. However, with this vast and empty space, a very easy opportunity is presented to us of founding airstrips and air bases in these vast, open, and empty spaces. This will be in prime position to strike the Germans while they get stuck in the Alps. Hopefully. Hopefully. How's our construction building? Oh, we need some more cast. Uh, transport planes. Probably shouldn't get rid of these, but we don't. I don't, I don't really want them. I'd rather not even see them. Yeah, I don't even want to be tempted by these guys, so. 
Chaos is needed. Other than that, we're doing really, really well. So they're at seven. I want to see what, what they, they do. Since, since we're still in the lead. So I'm going to actually pull you guys down here. Three infantry divisions should be enough to help defend right there. And... All right, not bad. We're still shooting down a lot of enemy planes, even though they're shooting down our planes as well. Let's do Desert Roaches. Oh, yeah, that helps us with armor uh, defense. Awesome. In the unlikely case, the Germans manage to break through the Alps, a large amount of combat is predicted to take place in the Adriatic salt flats. As such, we plan to drill our armored units for combat in these vast and open spaces so they can effectively utilize the terrain to our advantage. Ah, oh, I love it. Hmm. Just a few too many divisions here for me to really want to attack there. Let's get over here still, because I love attacking, 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 which is totally okay. He's becoming a commando, which is nice. Yeah, let them drain themselves on the line. And these guys are only 8 combo with, and we're barely still getting any army XP, though. Hmm. Desert Roaches. We built the Alpine Line. Along our border with the Germans, we built a network of fortifications after the end of our alliance. However, with the nation having to focus elsewhere, this has mostly fallen into disrepair and disuse. In the face of new challenges, it would be the best if we reactivated this line to ensure that the Germans have an even tougher time breaking through the Dolomites. Ah, huh, Dolomites, huh. Alright, so right now, minus 6 on 1.7, 3.8, not terribly bad. Alright, let's go and do fun the project. Always good to do. Oh, wait. Yeah. Both of those are always good to do. We can close this for now. Fire the current leader. Now, at 19%, I think we're doing okay. Ah, uh, very nice. Rebuild the Alpine line with expanding the Alpini. The Alpini are the pride of the Italian army and some of the best divisions. These troops are experts in mountaineering combat and is due to the nature of the border with the Germans it is in our best interest to expand our Alpini divisions. Due to this, or due to this, a large recruitment drive will be perform performing the Dolomites to find the best men best suited for the job and hopefully bolster the Alpini's ranks. Hopefully. Expanding infrastructure, nice. Finding the project. And let's, let's go and test our work, why not? So, okay, I didn't even do anything. And they already go over. I love it. This is great. Can we go to Sam? Oh, we can go to Sam. Nice. Oh, they're still attacked. They don't like that. But I do. Oh, I love it. Oh, man. Now we're still only at 141. Or 41. The Northern Shield. With the position secured against Germans, we can be assured that if war is to come, the Germans will be blended against our new defensive measures and networks, and the Dolomites and the Northern Shield by our soldiers. We get more attack. I love it. All right, so we're going to struggle here. And that's okay. Ah, uh, he's becoming an organizer, an urban assault specialist. Ah, uh, yeah. And does our field marshal have anything that we could do here? Giuseppe Aloya. He's a fast planner. That's nice. Um, we're doing okay. Oh, they keep throwing in more soldiers here. So we might not be able to win, but maybe. We'll see what happens. All right, we won. Exactly as expected, and roads to destruction. Ever since the death of Amadeo, partisan activities from within the Horn of Africa have picked up immensely and only continue to escalate. In recent days, they've started to target infrastructure within the colony. Roads, rails, and even dockyards. A major stretch of the famed Imperial Road has been blown sky-high by local militant groups. Investigators who arrived on the scene concluded that, that satchel charges were planted 50 meters apart from each other, exploding sequentially and having left potholes the size of a house. This demonstrated act of terrorism has halted any transport of goods on the road for what is likely to be indefinitely until the resources to fix the roads are allocated. And with East Africa stretched to the breaking point already, it is clear that Italy will have to step in once again. While fixing the road is certainly the priority, it is also believed that the partisans will ramp up such attacks and increase their severity. It would be beneficial if the Italian Commission boosted their support of the colonial administration, but this could prove too costly. The fate of East Africa hangs in the balance. Send additional divisions to the front. They'll fix it eventually. I'm confident they'll fix it eventually, in which we should have an ocean-going merchant marine. The Suez, Suez Canal remains essentially our only route into the oceans. Thousands of Italian families depend on the imports and exports flowing in and out of the canal, and we, before the triumvirate's collapse, tax outside use of it. It must be used to its full extent. Our merchant vessels will be given full use of the Suez and will be given escorts if need be. Furthermore, efforts will be made to maintain the Suez and ensure it remains in peak functionality. If our merchant vessels were, be, were to be delayed or stopped altogether, our navy and merchants would be useless. Obviously, <laughs> this can't be allowed. But this can be. I love it. Oh, yeah, they, they must be out of guns. Or, yeah, we already saw that they are out of guns, so... Nice. Three, two, kill them off anyways. Ah, oh, crush them. Actually, how many tanks do we have? Minus eight. That's not great. So after this one, 
Let's do this one. Why not? Suez Perla del Imperio. If anything, it is the Suez Canal that has held our empire together economically. It allows us to get trade and supplies without having to pay for the appearance of hefty fine to use a Gibraltar trade route. The importance of the canal cannot be overstated, as it is the ultimate lifeline of Italy. We must make sure that such a lifeline is properly fortified and that is totally under our control. Thankfully, Alanthropa has not impacted the ability of the Suez to function, so any maintenance that needs to be done will not be too expensive. The Pearl of the Empire must always stay Italian no matter what happens. Even if we, even if the Iberians would want to enjoy the fruits of the Suez Canal, it must remain under us. Uh, scout helicopters. We have attack helicopters. How are planes? Yeah, let's get some better planes. How about that? Uh, well, I want to improve my tanks too, but we'll get there eventually. Good job, fellas. Now, it's looking a little risky here, but what we're going to do is to continue pushing this direction. Encircle these. Oh, well, yeah, encircle those guys right there. Nice. Give them some time, let them get some more organization, and that'll be nice. And they're attacking us like crazy. Uh, I love Turkey. Very nice. Alright, now it's time to head on over. Now I want you to hold, but you're going to support the attack. There you go. Oh, come on, we couldn't encircle them. That's so dumb. Wait, where did the other tank go? Hello? Oh, you're just covering each other up. It looks very, very tight there. Beautiful. Oh, we lost. At least they didn't die fully. I'm like, holy crap, where they, where they go? Italy holds on. Despite the Turks' best efforts, our troops in the Middle East have been able to stem the tide of Turkish forces and blunt their offenses. Reports from our intelligence networks that the, are the Turkish government is panicking due to the war dragging out and their economy suffering for, making this an ample time to send peace terms. In the halls of the Grand Council, two ways to deal with the Turks have come to prominence. The first is from our Duce Siano, and it's quite moderate. In it, he proposes that we demand reparations from the Turkish government and also demilitarization of the Damascus region to ensure that they cannot threaten our presence in the Middle East again. The other deal, proposed by Siano's rival and the party scores, is demanding the handling of some of the territories from the Turks, namely the Damascus region and the Mosul region from Iraq. He argues that Turkey or Turks now know that they are beat and will accept these terms and that these regions will give us access to new wealth and improve relations with our Iraqi allies. All remains is for the council to vote on a deal. Siano, I, I really actually would much prefer scores this deal just because I would like to get Damascus and more factories and give like, you know, Iraq, Mosul, which I think would be awesome. But since we're going Demo democratic route, we'll go this one. I think we've done great. We haven't done a lot, but hey, Italy wins a Tyler Turkish war. Something I couldn't do last time we did this, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Uh, Dalla Chiesa. Good job, man. Good job. Can I have my soldiers back, though? Yes, I can. Cool. And we lost quite a few planes, but so let's make sure we do okay. Especially since we I want more cast, but we don't have enough, you know, factories for cast. Oh, I forgot to do my Navy stuff again. And it's not like the Navy really matters here, does it? Nope. That goes again. Everyone's having a good time. Ah, very good. And the pillars. The modern Italian economy is set up by two primary pillars, industry and agriculture. While both pillars are in a dire state, the collapse of the triumvirate requires us to invest more into our domestic industry so that the pillars can successfully do their job of holding up the Italian economy. We must finish modernizing agriculture and tap into the wealth of industry that Italy holds. Of course, our infrastructure will be built up even more to support the increased amount of materials that will soon flow through Italy. Our pillars will become unshakable, not for, for not even the strongest economic earthquake can make them fall. Which is a good thing. You're not done training, son. No, 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 no. You're going to train indefinitely until we run out of fuel. Which I think they're already doing, which is great. A great, great thing. Let's take a look at the great game. Once it's done lagging, they're... Oh, or in turn five. Okay, I should have realized that before. So, we've... actually, it doesn't even matter. We won three times, so I'm not going to spend anything there, which is fine with me. Cut that down. Cut that down. Very good. Again, we actually did it. We, we won in the Levant. And now, we've won in Bulgaria because we've won three turns. So, nice. Three out of five. I love it. Um, I didn't even have to pay attention. You know what? They might even screw themselves up even more if we don't do anything there. So, Okay, so at this point, I want to make sure that our divisions are actually good enough. We cut down and shrank the size of our divisions last time. So, let's go ahead and re-increase their size. Just to make sure if we ever actually do it, we're okay. So... Modernize the infrastructure, though. Benito Mussolini legendarily said that he made the trains run on time. While any good Italian knows that this is obviously true, <clears throat> 
The fact remains that even if a train runs on time, it can still take a very long time to reach its destination. Many town railways are beginning to age, and there's also too many steam locomotives still in use, especially when diesel and electric trains are objectively superior. We must rectify this issue by modernizing our railway system, and by phasing out the old trains, of course. We cannot focus purely on trains if we are modernizing infrastructure. The Italian roads, the pride and glory of the old Roman Empire, must be modernized as well. New roads shall be built across the Adriatic salt flats, and existing roads shall be upgraded to reflect a new and modern Italy. Our infrastructure efforts shall lead to a more interconnected Italian economy, and easier trade, bolstering our economy to heights once thought impossible. Minus 10 billion. Ah, oh, beautiful. And what do we have over here? Oh, even more beauty. One, two, three. Almost almost four. We're getting closer to four, which is actually very, very nice. So what, what's going to happen once Croatia falls apart? Beautiful, my friends. Ah, I love it. Overwhelming force, not bad. All right, so let's grab some comprehensive strategic analysis. Because we can. Yeah, we definitely need more main factories. We need more military factories. That's going to be a big thing for us. The ungrateful men. Despite the Italian commission throwing in all they can afford, at least according to them, the local settlers from within East Africa have grown tired of the constant chaos surrounding what was promised to them to be fertile, safe, and beautiful land. They've attributed their current predicament to the belief that the government has failed to provide ample support to them in the wake of the death of Amadeo, and that bloodthirsty partisans ravaging their farm is somehow the fault of the men in Rome. Such accusations are, of course, ridiculous, but the question remains about what should come of it. These colonial subjects are certainly ungrateful, and as such unruly subjects should not receive benefits. By cutting off luxury support, from, such as wines, fertilizer, shipments, and other things, they can be taught a lesson. <clears throat> Doing this, however, could very well worsen the situation and cause more entirely unneeded instability. Cut it off, they will be taught a lesson. Uh, if you'll say a lesson, this one. So, the first battle of the grain was one of the many battles that Benito Mussolini began in the 20s. While it was successfully or successful at greatly increasing production of necessary foodstuffs, it also led to the decline of major Italian exports such as cheese and wine. Be while it was becoming clear that we must take a fight at the second battle for grain, we must strike a balance. Old farms shall be rejuvenated from near death, the land shall be cleared for new farms, and we shall provide these new farms with modern agricultural equipment. Of course, that we will also remind the established farmers that there is much money to be made in not just grain or cereal, but in the finer luxury. This balance might be much harder to strike, but it should hopefully lead to a more economically independent and prosperous Italy. Italy, Italy, Italy. Which is a great, great restaurant place to go to in Chicago, Boston, Dallas, Las Vegas, LA, so. If you've ever been to Italy, let me know, because I love that place so much. <clears throat> I've said this before, but I'm not even Italian. I love Italy. Ooh. I have a one in Rhea did, because I saw a map. Ah, there we go. Bulgaria, side to the Italians. <clears throat> Beautiful, my friends. Oh, what do we have over here? Fire the current leader? Nope, we're okay. We don't see that. <sighs> Conclude the mechanization of agriculture. Italian agriculture have always been critical to the economy. We've been always trying to make sure that the farmers are able to farm successfully, and we have helped the peasants evolve into farmers by modernizing them. However, not all the Italian agriculture is mechanized. There's still people who use horses to farm, and the idea of such things as tractors are far-fetched to them. Thankfully, there are only a few farms that have not been mechanized, so as a push to finish modernizing agriculture shouldn't be too expensive. Finishing this modernization of Italian agriculture will be critical to helping advance the Italian economy into the modern era. Of course, we will not merely uplift those who do not have the agricultural technology. We will also help the farmers who have already adopted mechanized agriculture by helping them obtain the newest equipment and tractors and by teaching them the newest agricultural techniques. These efforts may not be the cheapest, but their returns will greatly outweigh the costs. Absolutely. <clears throat> my apologies for me coloring my both all the time. I don't know. Maybe I'm going through second puberty. Oh, the Imperial City of Iran has canceled the non-aggression pact. Well, that's not good. Now, I do want to... I just... Like I said in the, in the last video... I would love to know or see like an updated trick history because what happens if they lose the government or you know lose a battle for the Levant or the war? What happens when they lose roads? I mean, if they were, if I was in Turkey, I'd be pretty pissed off at what has happened here. <laughs> so I, I I'm interested in seeing the political ramifications. But hey, we got enough political power in which we can develop more reserves, perhaps. Let's see, South Sudan, Yemen, medium oil reserve. Last time when I played this, Italy and did this, I think I did Kuwait just because it's developed with further development available. Iraq and Libya. <clears throat> well, let's go ahead and do small reserve, no further prospecting available. I think I want to do maybe Libya because we did make them citizens. So, how about Libya? Improve it. Oh, we can improve Italy. Oh, is ourselves here? I don't see Italy in the thing. So, how do we improve Italy? We get two more synthetic refiners, which is not bad, actually. And for 
We don't have cores on these. Do we have cores on these? Oh, we have cores. Okay, let's do Libya then. Finish off work in Libya. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, without getting involved in our colonies, we have hopefully enough political power to do whatever we really need to do, which is great. But incentivize the IRI's projects. The IRI has been a valuable asset to Italy in the past, and perhaps we, we, even with our current economic struggles, they can be even a greater one. We will begin efforts to extend IRI's power and jurisdiction. Additionally, plans will be made to increase political support for the IRI. Special bonuses for, to IRI's funding will also be made to incentivize further economic support, hopefully allowing us to realize that the organization's full potential. With IRI's aid, some time and no small amount of luck, our economy may fully recover from the terrible economic strain that the collapse of the Triumvirate has left us in. Uh, let's hope so. Keep spending that money, though. Even though it, we have to spend more money to do this, it's totally okay. Totally, totally, totally okay. We're going to need more fuel as well. Uh, mass production. Oh, I love it. It feels like things are coming together. It's 1963. Not bad. Uh, what do we want? Planes? Let's grab some better fuel tanks. How about that? <clears throat> Beautiful. Not bad. Not bad. I'm enjoying this a little bit. I think I'm enjoying this a little bit more right now than uh, when I first played Italy as the fastest route. Just because we won in Levant. We beat the Turks. We got, like... Antalya. We have a little bit more political power to work with. We got Bulgaria on our side, so I'm feeling a little better about this campaign than uh, I think where I was with playing as a fascist route. Even though I would love to integrate San, San Marino. So at this point, let's go ahead and stop abusing our fuel as much. You guys go home. Have a good time. And then let's go and do center production. <clears throat> Our efforts to increase our industrial prowess have begun to bear fruit, but we cannot stop yet. More resources, money, and manpower must be invested into our industry, or Italian's economic rebirth will be snuffed out before it can truly begin. Additionally, we will build further factories, further improve our machines, and further expand our products. We cannot afford prolonged economic issues. Italy must become a center of industry in Europe, or all that we've worked so hard to build may yet be lost. Oh, um, Italian soups control the Gulf. Oil is the lifeblood of the Empire. Very good. And maybe we should stop training some more of these guys as well. Alright, y'all, go on home. Oh, I forgot to give him commanders. It doesn't really matter too much. There you go. Fulvio. A friendly fire. The soldiers were marching down a dust-caked path somewhere in the mountainous and rural Ethiopia. <clears throat> marching is a strong word. The formation was more akin to a loose shamble of half-alive bodies holding firearms. The scream of the surgeon grew more and more hoarse as a long and winding day grew on. An increasingly brutal sun beat down on them, engulfing them in a seared, searing heat. Enrico was one of these men, a fresh hero, as some of his squadmates would call him. Enrico had signed up for the peacekeeping force, entranced by a colorful poster he'd seen during a bike ride in the sleepy little Cal Calabrian town. Signed up for the Italian peacekeeping force, see a distant lands, and travel the empire. <clears throat> Enrico was not enjoying his little adventure, not one bit. He was regularly berated by both his squadmates and his commanders, forced to do repulsive ground cleaning, and worst of all, had to wake up at four in the morning. God, that's terrible. If he knew what he was getting himself into whatsoever, he wouldn't have dared to enter that recruitment office, but here he was regardless, stumbling down in the Ethiopian desert, but keeping a peace that didn't exist. <clears throat> As Enrico was mulling over his decisions in life, suddenly a crack rang out across the valley. The man to his left dropped to the ground and a bullet puncturing his gut. A horde of black men in peasants' clothing came rushing out of the ridges surrounding the road. A pitchfork came f flying from the crowd, piercing the corporal to his right's chest. Confused and disoriented, Enrico pointed his rifle at the attackers, shakily aiming down its top. His sights locked onto a man's head. He closed his eyes and took a breath. You don't want to close your eyes. You got to keep it up. You got to keep your eye open on that. Bang! 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 The th shooting went. An offer seemed like minutes, screaming of men assaulting his ears. He could not see the carnage, but he knew it was there. Remember one moment, a sharp blade came down onto Enrico's shoulder. Everything went pitch black. <clears throat> After action reports later stated, a group of native farmers attacked a peacekeeping patrol. Three Italians dead. Many injured. Is this a place worth it anymore? So we need to replace him. And that's where we consider our options. There we go. And the fourth economic power. America, Japan, and Germany are the three largest economies in the world. To no one's surprise, they also lead the three primary alliances. But the fourth largest economy is Italy. While we may not be in a major may may not be in a major alliance anymore, this does not mean that we are weak. Our econ economy prospers for the first seven years, and while we may never be number one, being as high up as number four is an impressive achievement. Italy's finally beginning to assert itself globally as not the sidekick of the Germans or the leader of the Triumvirate, but as a strong and prosperous nation, God willing, we will stay this powerful for a long time. Nice. <clears throat> Man, my voice. What is wrong with it? Oof. Pretty nice. Not bad. And like normal, we're out of fuel. Actually, just throw the ships here. I'll just throw them over here, actually. Yeah, that's fine. You know what? Mm, just from here, anyways. That's yeah, fine. There you go. Mm, he's a sea wolf. There you go, fully veal. And you guys are what? Ah, oh, fourth economic power. I love it. 
Now, if I remember correctly, when I played as Italy... Oh, we must wait for the Verona Conference. Over the past few months, the differences between Siano and Party Secretary Carlos Scorza have grown untenable. Scorza's vehement opposition to any and all of Siano's proposed reforms grinds the government to a halt weekly, and all the parties realize something must be done. Preparations are being made to hold a convention in Verona to address the future direction of the Italian government and the party. One way or another, reform is, of course, needed. And we must also test our work. Because at this point, I think in the, you know the episodes and campaign here not much is going to happen until we really move ahead of time so what we're going to do is this let's see you are nine out of ten. Oh, there goes madagascar it's kind of nice to see them go bye bye the everlasting legacy of the reich i'm going to throw you guys into here i'm going to combine you guys as well because we're going to need to make these guys a little thicker there you go because i don't want to deal with this many different types of things there you go that's not too bad everyone go and reform go home are you really? That's all you have? That really sucks. Okay, so there you go. Every single task force needs... Ooh. Um, wow. That sucks. You see the crisis? Out with the crash. Very cool. Let's go put this here. I said I was going to do this off-screen in yesterday's video, but it ended up not being yesterday's video, so... Mm. So, the one with 14 is not great. Uh, I think this will do. This will do more than fine enough. What are we spending fuel on besides construction stuff? Not much. Daily gains minus 72, which is not great. Cut it down. Ah, 33 billion is not bad. Oh, look at this. Oh, we can do this again. Nice. Awesome. Well, we North Sudan. Let's do Oman. Nothing bad will happen to Oman, right? Or, let's see. Eh. Well, I know Kuwait's really good, so let's do Kuwait. More synthetic refineries, why not? And maybe we'll improve Italy next, if we get enough political power. 1.59 is not bad. Not too shabby. Well, it's time for more technology and madness in Mogadishu. As the sun rose over the seaport of Mogadishu, it was clear that something was wrong. Plumes of smoke rose from the dockyards, choking the sky in a black suit. Overnight, a rumble shook the area with a great boom as the seamen arrived there to prepare the boats for the day's work. All they found was wreckages, the entire wharfage pockmarked by explosive craters. Military ships and even civilian boats were brought down to the bottom of the sea where they had just floated the night before. Across a Somalian government, reports much like this one were placed on the desk of district supervisors and eventually up to the governor. The overall conclusion being drawn is that overnight, extremely well-coordinated native partisans had sabotaged and destroyed many a marina imperative to the stationing of Italian naval assets in the region. This has also caused costly damage to destroyers, cruisers, and battleships alike. It seems that the far partisans fled before the sailors or anyone for that matter knew what was happening and no leads have been found regarding the case. This is clear and blatant evidence that the situation in East Africa is deteriorating still, but at a rapid rate. Current conditions could reach the breaking point soon. Help is desperately needed and requested to prevent things from spiraling out of authorities' control. It isn't that bad. Just keep the current path. Just keep down the current path. We'll, we'll do okay. It's okay, guys. It's okay. Yeah, just just don't just don't die in the explosions. <laughs> just don't die down there. You know, can't, can't you just not die? Okay, so we got all that stuff done. Uh, let's get some better infantry stuff finally, and get some better artillery maybe, as well as some better tanks maybe. I love the skirts. Hmm. And let's improve ourselves as well. Let's see. I was hoping that because of what we've done. That we would be able to see some uh, the Verona conference, but we're stuck here together, I guess, and that's totally fine. Oh, there goes Madagascar, totally okay. Battle tanks are not bad. We can keep it like that. Guns or support equipment? We got plenty of support equipment for now. I want to go at least up to five of this. That's not bad. I think we've got enough for this for now. So, oh wait, that's anti-tank. Uh, let's go down to three then, because we have 108 already, and Croatia has not fallen apart yet, which is great. I want you all to train, so you'll be nice and good. Oh, and actually, you know what? Screw all you guys will become infantry divisions like this. We need more anti-tank, which sucks, but that's fine. We'll make it. We'll make it eventually. Ooh, yes, please. Yes, please. So we're going to go as fast as we can through this. Um, I'm not going to pause the game then, unless we have something to read. And how is the budget looking? Because we did that. Not bad. 32 billion is not bad number. Anti-tank, of course, is slightly getting better, actually. Even though it's minus 120. Oh, it's getting worse now. Negative 22, negative 
20. Okay, it's getting better. Sion gives a speech. Finally, friends, countrymen, while well, I've always been and will always be a member of a great party, the tenets that uphold our country are not set in stone. Sion delivered a speech today in Rome where he urged the evolution of the National Fascist Italian Party. The world in 1921 is drastically different than the one of today. Our great founders could never predict the rise of TV, modern medicine, and other defining traits of our new era. Just like the economy, the government must adapt to our modern reality. Time, his time, is of course approaching. Oh boy. And it's time to finish for us to finish our coffee. Ah, wonderful. Caffeine. I love drugs. But you always gotta clean your mouth with water after you drink stuff that can stain your teeth. Hmm. Develop with for the Persian Gulf, huh? I did say I want to do Italy next, so. Yes, synthetic refineries. I'm loving this. Who cares about a colonies? Just invest in oil production and stuff like that. I love it. And so, scores me to the supporters. Party Secretary Carlos Scorza uh, has spent the last few weeks leading up to the Verona Conference meeting with a collection of old guard diehards in the party. While these meetings have taken place beyond closed doors, Scorza has deliberately leaked some information to the press. A return to our roots is required, he said, in a press conference held earlier this week. We must hold true to our values in this era of increasing uncertainty around the world. He needs all the support he can get. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Scorza, no, you go home. You go to your little village, wherever you came from, Scorza. And have a good time. Just kind of, you know, leave everyone else alone, please. For the sake of the country, please. Huh. How are we building right now? Not bad still. One, two, three, four. Almost. We got 4.5 almost. Four and a half. Almost four and a half. It's June 7th. Not bad. And suspected Red Brigade activity on conference grounds. While well, our newspapers tried to best cover it up, reports emerged from that three Red Brigade agents were captured this week, snooping around the conference grounds of Verona. They resisted enhanced interrogation and... <clears throat> and confessed nothing, but we suspect that they were searching for vulnerabilities in the building's security, including black, black door, back door entrances and exits. The population already uncertain about the conference is increasingly wary that this could turn from a show of unity into a fiasco. Raise security at once and the conference begins. From all over Italy, delegates, representatives, politicians, bureaucrats, black shirts, and more coming from all strata and organizations of the PNF's massive political apparatus are convening today in Verona. The medieval city is draped with Italian tricolors and fascist black flags. The crowd cheers as Duce's car makes its way through the city, escorted by a small contingent of elite black shirts, before finally reaching the location of the conference. Castel Vecchio, a castle outside the main urban center, but built by the Scaglieri dynasty back in the Middle Ages, is now swimming and swarming with curious onlookers, journalists, and black armed black shirts manning their posts. <clears throat> The other guests of the conference entered the Castello Vecchio with much less ado, talking and plying as silently as the black shirts posted around the building stood with their rifles in hand, uniforms and suits huddled together in small groups, qu talking quietly before breaking up and then starting again. An endless dance around the tables where bottles of fancy wines and plates full of snacks are emptied, and then filled up again. While well, the politician scheme, deals and alliances are made and broken, and when all the delegates are called to sit in the main hall, Secretary Scorza and his Prime Minister Siano make eye contact for a second as the latter prepares to take the floor for the conference. The conference's opening speech. A tense silence permeates the air. The battle to decide Italy's future has begun. Woe to the defeated. And time for another event, shall we? Oh. Ikeda looked at Prime Minister of Japan. Status quo wins again. Oh, Siano meets with the king. While well, King Umberto is a little more than a figurehead, he has met with Siano this week and endorsed his plans for the conference. Following on the heels of the last month's security fiasco, this move has assuaged many common people that this conference will be a good thing for the long-term stability of Italy. An important meeting for sure. The future of Min Pop. The Ministry of Popular Culture was founded in 1937 to control and regulate Italy's media and art industries to make sure that they follow the party lines. Conceived as an answer to the German Reich's Ministerium for Propaganda, the Minkel Pop soon instead became a source of ridicule, its bloated bureaucracy egregiously as easy to circumvent, its censorship useless at best, and har actually harmful at worst, and its overall efficiency as a matter of jokes. Its very name invokes hilarity among the Italian people, as its acronym Minkel Pop sounds uncannily similar to the Italian word for big booty. To amend the sorry situation, many party officials have suggested a renewal of Min Cole Pop, spearheaded by the Secretary Carlos, Carlo, Carlos Scorza, this reform would radically alter the bureaucracy of the Min Cole Pop, making it more efficient, expedient, and most of all, effective at spreading the fascist values to the general population. The Duce has rapidly shut down such proposals as him, along with many others feel that it would be more of a mere waste of resources, as the Minko Pop has largely outlived its usefulness. Nevertheless, this matter has been brought up in Verona and is now being discussed by the Congress. Could they at least change the acronym? And um, Thailand. Cool. <clears throat> and we're still not making more divisions, which is totally okay with us. 1.59, not bad. And Seattle speaks out against the Minkol Pop. Galetzio, Seattle's address, the conference 
regarding the proposed reform to Minkle Pop and, as predicted, spoke out against reforming the institution, arguing that censorship in Italy isn't as necessary as it was in the 20s and 30s, when the subversive threat of communism and sedition was still a serious threat. Sianos instead proposed that the funds be needed to restore the Minkle Pop be redirected to more pressing matters. La Duce went on speaking out in favor of the Italian movie, literature, and TV industries, which had proven to be very profitable and popular abroad, and the, and the men Kolpov is only harming them by slowing down the production of new cultural products and stifling the creativity and genius of Italian directors and writers. <coughs> While some rounds of applause arrived from the parts of the conference, many fascist politicians were much less enthusiastic about the proposal, fearing a possibly deregulated entertainment industry could lead to seditious tendencies and spring more quickly among the population. Everyone loves Italian cinema, just ask the Japanese. Ah, I love APCs. Scores to speak to the council. While Siano was meeting with, meeting with the king, Scores was preparing a speech to deliver to the Grand Council of Fascists in this morning. He took the stage to arousing applause from hardlander members of the body. Gentlemen, fascism has and will continue to be fascism. No more reforms, placations to degenerate leftists and liberals, or rumors of democracy. We are united in purpose and aim to stick to the foundations that won us the war and, and took us to greatness. Maybe he has a point, maybe. <laughs> Scorza speaks about the importance of the ministry, though. Applauded by large sections of the party, Carlos Scorza has taken the floor for the first time in Verona, delivering a plan to reform Min Cole Pop, which would take into account the Duce's wars regarding the ministry while at the same time giving it the importance it deserves. By streamlining the bureaucracy, allowing an advisory board of directors and entertainment experts, and ever so slightly relaxed the censorship, relaxing the censorship, the Min Cole Pop can easily and expediently be turned into a modern and efficient system institution. Scores have continued to, by reminding the conference of the importance of stipending and upholding the values of the fascist revolution. Among the population, it are warned against the dangers of seditious, lavicious, and downright degenerate artistic products making their way to the population, corrupting the Italian youth and weakening the strong moral fibers of the nation. While many in the conference were evidently enthusiastic about the secretary's words, many more were puzzled and somewhat convinced that this is just a thinly veiled power play by scores of. Seriously, change the acronym. Yeah, not bad. And 23% has become 25%. 27% survey for a project. Not bad. Let's go and fund the project as well, shall we? And invest in what? The regions develop with further available Persian Gulf. Finish off work. So we're going to finish off the areas that we have done very well so far. So, and... Because we want to play to our strengths. The Grand Council votes on the Minkol Pop. While scores have managed to strong on the Duce into letting the Grand Council vote about the Minkol Pop reform, there's no guarantee that the proposals will pass. And it's also likely that it'll be shot down by delegates of the Grand Council choosing to follow Siano's stance. However, scores has been gathering support, so victory isn't impossible. Beyond closed doors, the Grand Council votes in silence. C and no are written down one by one, and when the votes are counted, shot down. Scores his proposal passes. Eh, scores his proposal shot down. It's scores his time to leave. Nice. Very good. Still no fuel, but that's okay. Reform the Black Church. Since the March on Rome, the Volunteer Militia for National Security, properly known as the Black Church, has expanded its powers. The Black Church now enjoy considerable power in Italy, rivaling the Car Carabinieri's uh, official powers. <clears throat> Black Church units are feared for the terror, attacking on occasion American tourists, university students, colonial subjects, and anyone else perceived to be an enemy of fascism. The Black Church also constitute one of the most reactionary groups within the PNF apparatus, effectively constituting an old boys network of prominent hardline fascists, especially in the higher ranks. Siena, going into the Verona Convention, wishes to limit the power of the Black Shirts accordingly. Siena plans on instituting a retirement age and limiting the Black Shirts' arrest power severely. Scores are hoping to shore up his support among the Black Shirts and conservative fascists will do his best to oppose these reforms. The stage is set for a potential confrontation between Siena and Scorza, and the MVSN members of the conference have been less than neutral over Siena's proposals. Let's hope there isn't a fight, but if there is one, let it be. <clears throat> 170,000, not bad, still training, and Siano speaks in favor of black shirt reforms. Siano rose to the podium, with tensions hanging up in the air. He opened up by thanking the black shirts, and offered at least lip service to the accomplishments over the past four years. Siano commended the black shirts units who fought so bravely in Africa and Europe, and the black shirts who stamped out communist insurgents. Siano earned the applause of a significant portion of the room, however. Notably, the black shirt commanders in attendance held 
their applause. Following the pause, Siano next moved into condemnation of the black shirt excesses. He condemned overzealous suppression of the protesters and dissenters, along with colonial excesses. Murmurs and whispers filled the chamber following this, and several black shirt commanders walked out of the speech. Seemingly undeterred by the slight, Siano continued his speech, laying out his set of reforms. First, he suggested a mandatory retirement age for the black shirts, and what might have been the most pointed words of the conference, condemned a general gerontocracy among the senior black shirt officers. After this, he suggested remedying the, this brutality problem with a substantial reduction of the black shirt's civil authority, including their ability to make arrests. Siano's speech only increased the tension within the chamber, and with scores of speaking nests, the conference seemed wholly on edge. That didn't make anything better, unfortunately. <clears throat> and, something about scores are probably... Hopefully, hopefully, the scores of opposes black shirt reforms. Scores of open a speech with a long name by name thank you to each of the present black shirt commanders for the long service to Italy and a clear rebuke to Siano's genontocracy remark. Scores are next defending the black shirts and their actions, arguing that the suppression of disloyalty necessitated occasionally brutal methods. This earned him cheers and applause from black shirts in the room. Scores are next launched into a blistering attack on student protesters, seemingly only tangentially related to the subject at hand, albeit closed out with a thanks to the black shirts for stamping them out. Scores have then attacked the proposal to remove the black shirts' arrest powers. These powers, scores argue, were so fundamentally necessary to the MVSN's status that the removal would be, in fact, spelled death for the black shirts and by extension. The PNS control over Italian life, yet again. The black shirts presented enthusiastically cheered, while the rest of the chamber's reaction was considerably more tepid. As scores of his closest speech, he took time to target what he described as a shift away from ideological fascism that was characterized by the conference, and expressed hope that in the upcoming vote, the Grand Council would support the proposal that strengthens the fascist ideology. Fascism needs its enforcers. Probably does. Let's go and get some more like infantry for more organization. I was kind of surprised these guys haven't rebelled against us yet, but that's okay. Let them not rebel and we'll be we'll do okay. One, two, three, four, almost five. Great. Vote on the black shirt reforms. As expected, the reform proposal was deadlocked and sent to the Grand Council fascism. The vote was expected to be tight in the Grand Council, as both Scorza and Siano have attempted to court potential swing voters in the Grand Council. Trust among the factions in the Grand Council seemingly completely evaporated. As the Grand Council members begin to vote and any bit of goodwill at the conference seems to evaporate. So we either go with C or no. Black shirt reform grows. Yes, it does. Siano's influence grows as well. Because we love Siano Galezio. Or Galezio Siano. If you'd like to read about him, go right ahead, as I'm a little bit more focused right now on getting more political power. I love it. Loosening government control over trade unions? Since the dawn of the fascist era, strict regulations have been placed on trade unions across the country. Back in the 20s, a new fascist trade union was set up called the Conf Confederazione Nazionale della Corporazione Sindicali. National Confederation of Syndical Corporations and the pre-existing trade unions, blah, blah, trade unions, especially leftist ones, were banned and their remnants reintegrated into the Confederazione Confederazione Nacional, originally meant to become one of the pillars of the new fascist state. A blur of bureaucracy and a shift in power dynamics within the regime caused it to become a tool of oppression rather than empowerment, especially if the Legi Fascistissima of 1939 made strikes illegal and further clamped down on workers' rights. The Confederazione Nacional allows very little actual worker representation and is instead perceived as a tool of control used by the fascist state to prevent the workers from organizing into independent unions, fueling anger and radicalization among the urban poor. Leducci has proposed a radical solution to this problem, breaking up the the CN into smaller, more independent trade unions, allowing for actual worker representation and more autonomy. Needless to say, this proposal is controversial, and many in the PNF, among them Carlos Scorza, have voiced their strong opposition to it. Solidarity forever? Well, we'll see, in which we shall also choose what up next. Uh, develop with further developments available in Kuwait. Finish off work in Kuwait. Uh, well, it seems kind of boring. You don't get anything, so no. Improve Iraq? He has to be Iraq, because we like Iraq, right? All right, not bad. And for now, Siano's stance on the trade unions. Once more, the Duchies addressed the fascists reunited in Verona. This time, Siano's speech wasn't made up of firebrand rhetoric or grand declarations, but cold, hard numbers. Production targets, GDP growth, and purchasing power. A bombardment of graphs, tables, pie charts that could have been taken straight out of an economics textbook. Or, account economics textbook. With this data, so you can argue that the Confederazione Nazionale was stifling the growth of the Italian economy by imposing a Byzantine bureaucratic system over the productive aspects of society. Even more worrying, there is proof that the lack of worker representation is, leading a is a leading cause of spreading dissent and anger amongst the lower classes, which could be fertile ground for the spread of communist extremism by allowing smaller, more autonomous, and more easily manageable trade unions. All these problems could be solved with one easy move. Some applause arrived from the conference, but when you were clearly puzzled by the excessive amount of numbers and figures thrown at them. The economy, you fools. Ah, <sighs> very nice. We're still training our soldiers. I actually off-screen made sure that we actually started working on some more fighter wings, but scores of stance on the trade unions. <clears throat> 
Carlos Corza. That was once more spoken out against Ciano and Verona. The Duce's plan to reform the trade unions was met with anger by a large strata of the party, many of which felt that the key component of the fascist political edifice was being directly attacked. Scorza's speech was most less fact-oriented than Ciano's, reminding the conference of fascism's national cynicalist roots, evoking r vague terrors of communist specters that still linger in the air, and celebrating all the great things fascism did for the Italian working classes. Scorza sung his paean to his fascist trade unions, drawing a thundering applause from the conference. However, though... The weakest part of Scorza's address was a lack of clear policy proposals to address the problems faced by the CN. And woes to br it brings to the Italian economy. Much murmuring was heard in the conference, but it's not clear if he manages to sway many people to his side. Fascism for the working class? Well, we'll see what happens. You know, like all good things, we shall see what happens. I love mechanical com blessed computers. How about some APF SDS, followed with some multi layered steel ceramic composites, as well as uh, not that stuff, but how about some increased weapon enhancements? Why not? Sounds very good to us. The Ground Council's votes on the trade unions. The most hotly contested issue so far resulted in yet another stalemate at the conference, with neither Sion nor Scorza able to bring enough support to their side to make a breakthrough once more to avoid a rift breaking apart the NFP. The PNF, I mean. The Grand Council will have to vote on the matter. The tense, air is tense and the atmosphere is cold. Everyone knows that this vote will have historical significance. Once again, the CNO were written down and his dead silence hangs over the members of the Grand Council reunited together. Once again, the votes are counted and Siano's plan has passed. All right. And it was currently 44 political power every day. Keep spending more money, guys. Oh, the Siberian Black Army still have yet to play as them. I hope it plays them someday. So we have almost one, two, three, four. Okay, go not bad. The Acerbo laws. As the Verona Conference enters its closing days, a few and incredibly divisive issues have been brought up. Electoral laws, also known as Acerbo law, named their fascist politician Giacomo Acerbo, who wrote the law and presented it before the Italian parliament in 1923. It was designed by the Partito Nazionale Fascista, with support from various right-wing parties to ensure that Mussolini and his coalition had complete and firm control over parliament. The law stipulated that whichever party had the majority of votes, provided that they gained more than 25% of total votes gained two-thirds of the seats in Parliament. <clears throat> These laws were only used in a single election in 24, which predictably resulted in the PNF conquering a supermajority in Parliament. Following this, more and more laws were passed to build up the fascist dictatorship and concentrating power in Mussolini's hands now in Verona. Some members of the PNF close to Siano have proposed a review of the said laws, including the original Acerbo Law of 1924. Their proposal consists of a few changes to electoral laws, which while also maintaining the PNF's supremacy, could potentially open the door to independent parties running and possibly even defeating the fascists. Needless to say, large amounts of the conference were outraged. Fierce debates arose, with Siano largely keeping silent still. Let's go, the debates escalated, with some scuffles even breaking out amongst party members. Please, everyone... Keep it civil. We don't want to be degenerate like those communists who like to engage in <clears throat> violent conflict, especially in the anarchy that is known as Russia. And we have debates. Perhaps yes, scores of plots in darkness this evening. Carlo, Mr. Carlos Scorza and a few important representatives from the PNF have met at a dinner in a luxurious restaurant in Verona's old town. There, in an elegant dining room behind closed doors, all of Scorza's guests could be witnessing the secretary's cold, calculated, terrifying rage. Siano has proven to be much harder to target than expected, and despite everything, much of the PNF still supports the spineless trade up usurping the tide of Duce. However, the Blau back against the proposals to change Esterbo laws and provided Scorza with a precious chance, a chance to ride the wave of dissent in the PNF to oust the Duce once and for all. Not one step back, the Acerbo laws must be defended at all costs. Scores made his point extremely clear. The fate of the fascist revolution and Italy depends on this. Are Siano's days numbered? Oh, Iberian Council. A useless organization for a weak, weak state. Maybe. We'll see what happens. And another factory has been made. Nice. Siano meeting behind closed doors. After the fierce clashes in the conference died down for the day, with the various delegates going to the hotels for the night, Siano reunited his closest advisors behind closed doors. A few generals, some high-ranking politicians, a, less, a few lesser-known names, all worried by the louder and louder voices coming from Scorza and his clique. This is it, the final stand. If Scorza manages to ride the wave of support to defend the acerbo laws and using the momentum to gain more and more followers, this might be the end of Siano's tenure as Duce. A defensive line must be drawn to stop Scorza's offensive, a compromise solution. Without repealing the acerbo law, they will be amended, allowing for for your popular choice of PNF representatives in local elections. This is not just a battle over an electoral law, it's a battle over who controls Italy, and the Duce is not willing to give scores a single inch more. We're in the endgame now. Oh boy, what's going to happen, everyone? Tell your votes. Who shall lead Italy? Seattle, shall he continue, or shall we get Carlos Scorza? Well, we already know my intent here, and we want big old daddy, Galezio Siano. Now, I don't know Italian, I don't speak Italian, I'm not Italian, but I've heard that's Galezio, with the hut at the end of Zo with Siano. But the Grand Council's final vote. 
And after Siano presents it, a moderate plan to amend the cerebral laws, the chaos in the conference turned into a dead, absolute silence. Oops, my bad. Wrong button for this. That's what I want. Suddenly, everyone realized clearly that this was not a battle between supporters and opposers of the cerebral laws. It was a battle between Siano and Scorza. Without uttering, uttering a single word, all members of the Grand Council entered one by one in the room where the final vote was to be held. After what seemed like an excruciatingly long time, all the votes were cast. The Speaker of the Council stuttered for a moment before reading the sheet where the votes were counted and announced the final result of... They will be amended. Let's see. Siano is Mr. Fascist. Authoritarian democracy is also... Siano and Faranacci. That's it. The final vote. When the speech is concluded, the members of the party line up to cast their votes in a vote of confidence. Confidence for Siano. When not legally binding, the passing of this vote will allow Siano to pursue some, if not all, of his reformist agenda. Once the counting was concluded, Secretary Scorza took the stage to announce the results. The delegates remain faithful to Siano. Just in case. Just in case. Just in case. Just in case. And boom. Boom. Bada boom. Boom. Bada boom. 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 Very nice. Time to spend some well-earned PP. Improve Tunisia. How is Tunisia doing? Well, they're not up here. Trans Jordan, small reserve, high reserve. Algeria? Let's do Algeria. Nothing bad will ever happen in Algeria, right? Yeah, Algeria sounds great, but Siano declares this Congress a success. In spite of the hardships and fierce opposition from his own party, the Verona Conference has ended as a net victory for Siano. In his closing speech, as a crowd of fascist representatives sat silently, the Duce expresses happiness at the newfound unity and strength of the party, and its commitment to push through the world's reforms and changes for the greater good of Italy. Scorza remained silent and dark face when Siano ended the speech, booming applause filled the air, but Scorza did not collapse. Power dynamics in the fascist state can be a fickle thing, but one thing is certain. Siano's hold on the PNF and on the nation is now stronger than ever. According to leaks and rumors coming from the war within the party, Scorza's clique is rapidly dissolving as more and more prominent politicians jump ship to Siano's faction, clearly the winning one. Siano's name was cheered by the crowds in Verona while the Duce stood on the car that was to bring him to the airport. The Duce has no intention on wasting time. Once back in Rome, he will finish a job that started in Verona. With Siano's newfound hold on the PNF, it's so hard to predict what the future of Italy will look like. The most optimistic observers argue that this new development will push Italy on the path to full democracy. Though the true extent of Siano's plans is still a matter of speculation. Ave Siano. Ah, beautiful. If you'd like to read about uh, Siano holds a line, go right ahead. But we will begin with negotiating reforms. Now that Siano's regained predominance inside his own party, this isn't the time to start pushing to turn our projects into reality. Party leads close to Siano must begin a long and arduous process of negotiations between the, with the representatives of the various groups, which will be affected by our reforms. How shall we do with the entrepreneurs in a country who wish for a more economic liberalization? How can we appease the students who so often take to the streets asking for free press and free academic institutions? How shall we respond to the cry of artists, directors, and writers who demand more freedom of expression in the arts? And most of all, how can we do all these things without causing yet another devastating rift in the PNF? How will we do it? By cutting down our debts. Verona Conference ends, an interesting development from Italia. And I put our little uh, spy person over here too, so. In addition, we shall go ahead and do winning over the fascists. The Christian Democrats? Sure, why not? The largest faction that is rising to compete within the democratic elections is somewhat heterogeneous one. Liberals, moderate Catholics, and centrists all united by their desire to see change through reform and a new approach to economic growth. Oh no, Hitler's dead. Rallying around the former university professor Aldo Moro and a large group of like-minded politicians, a new coalition started to call itself Christian Democracy or Democrazia Cristiana. Very popular among the Italian middle classes, the Christian Democrats largely appeal to the reformists and anti-fascist moderates in the country and seem to be well-liked by Seattle himself. Very cool. Very, very cool. Followed up with what? We shall go ahead along with their academic base and begins to improve. Oh, look at this. Army professionals begins to improve. Academic begins to rapidly improve. Well, let's do this one and then we'll go to support reformers. How about that? That's a long way there. The various anti-fascist voices that rise up in the country are far from being a choir. And if one leans in closer to listen, they sound more and more like a cacophony. If we should keep a country stable before we can create a proper democracy, we must make sure that we can find common ground and foster dialogue between the various factions that make up the wider anti-fascist front. In particular, the entrepreneurs and upper middle classes who want a freer market, mostly represented by D.C., and more left-leaning voices who fear that a quick turn towards the laissez-faire economy would endanger the more vulnerable, poor classes of Italy. Many moderate leftists, scarred by promises of economic liberalization, are starting to, f to listen to radical socialist rhetoric and a resurgence of left-wing radicalism is all a haunting possibility. Therefore, we shall officially begin talks and meetings with members of those factions to make sure that the transition towards democracy is a smooth and peaceful one. With constant and open dialogue between the different parties at all costs, we must avoid all forms of radicalization and extremism moving among various factions, and the only way to do this is by making sure that the change of all kinds must come through a slow, moderate, and democratic process, not from a barrel of a gun. Chaos in Austin and Germany has 
kill itself. The Christian Democrats prepare. According to our sources, the Christian Democrats are preparing for a contentious electoral campaign. Everything indicates that this coalition, a minor grouping of centrist Democrats and conservative elements bound by an idea of Catholic politics, will win power once the elections arrive. Lucci is not entirely pleased with their idea, seeing them as too conciliatory, conciliatory to moderate leftist voters, but King Umberto is reportedly a firm supporter. Whether they will manage to push their agenda and implement their ideas remains to be seen. Let's see what the favorites can do. And let's double check here. Good. And how about we read one more fa focus before we end the episode with winning over the fascists. Siona might once again be the undisputed leader of his own party, but that's not all to say that all intestine threats has been eliminated. Indeed, even though scores has largely been discredited, there are still many who cling to the more traditional reaction view of the party and of our country. However, there might be a solution. If we can convince the fascists of the PNF to play by the democratic rules, we could solve two problems at once. Winning over vast swaths of the PNF to the Xionist cause, and while securing and strengthening the nascent democracy. Some members of the party, such as Giorno Almirante, Augusto de Maranisha, and other politicians close to Siano, have proved and receptive to this idea. Perhaps they could form the backbone of a new right-wing party willing to engage in a democratic process. Gosh dang it. Uh, we have ex we have problems now. We do a battle for Algeria. With the recent collapse of the triumvirate, the Algerian situation has just become much more severe and a topic of hot discussion in the Italian government. Rumors, sometimes based on factual reports, sometimes bordering on paranoia, seem to imply that appearing troops are gathering in northern Africa, potentially preparing an offensive that might reach Tunis if un unchecked. Uh, some important members of the Italian military, including Governor General Castigliano, are already calling for mobilization. The Duce has ordered that a military action should be taken only as a last resort against Iberia and Algeria. A crisis on the horizon and a rapidly changing situation in Algeria may very well spell the end for peace in the western Mediterranean cool so that's going to end today's episode I think last time what did we do because we directly intervened in the nation extend the olive branch I think I went down the right path I think this time we'll probably go with Cal Castellano if this is what I did not do offer the can't refuse let me know in the comments below which, which path did we do last time offer the Jugutha um I can't remember. Please re remind me in the comments below which path we did last time, which path we should do this time in this campaign. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed the Verona conference. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will battle for the heart and soul of Italian for the Italian Empire, pushing for a democratic Italy. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.